tonight, the border crisis surging. Officials telling NBC News there were over 200,000 illegal crossings at the southern border last month. And a record 3 million migrants crossed the border in the last year. Now, a new warning, a thousand miles away in New York City, where officials tell us resources are overwhelmed. Across public hospitals in New York City, over the last year, nearly 30,000 visits by migrants and 300 new babies born to migrant moms. Staff here at Bellevue Hospital tell us they're eager to help, but the numbers are tough. This has been the hardest work that I've ever done, but it's been the most impactful work that I've ever done. And most of the visits to the taxpayer-funded legal clinic here are by migrants. Our clinics are full. And there are waiting lists, and people are turning people away or referring them to other places. Randy Redkin from New York's Legal Assistance Group says so many migrants are asking for legal help on asylum representation and health care access. Now, she says, American citizens who need legal assistance with issues like eviction and insurance have to wait up to 10 weeks. If you ask me, do we need more resources for legal services, I would say absolutely yes. Meanwhile, New York's governor now slamming the situation at the border. It is too open right now. Uh, people coming from all over the world are finding their way through simply saying they need asylum. And New York Mayor Eric Adams saying providing services for migrants will cost city taxpayers $12 billion. But Biden administration officials have blamed Adams' response. It is not an operationally sound effort. Mr. Fabricatore, thank you for being here, sir. I met you earlier in the hallway. I have a question for you, sir. In your 23 years of experience working at INS and, IC, and, and, and ICE, what can you tell me about the seriousness of child trafficking, which you, and what have you personally experienced as a result of the issues that we have seen with our open border policies? Well, number one, I mean, they, they stopped the, the DNA testing at the border. So, you know, we, we were testing adults to see if they had a DNA match with children. That policy has stopped. And I, I cannot figure out for the life of me why you would not want to figure out if a child that is being brought into the United States actually belongs to the adult that they're traveling with. But now we've stopped that. So now we're allowing these people to bring these children into the interior. And we have no idea who they, are, who they belong to. We have no idea if there's a familial connection. This is wrong. And it, and it needs to stop. We have children being, being brought in and, and we have children missing right now. We don't even know where they are because they've been brought in and, and they've either absconded, they've gone off. You know, they're, they're being used to, to traffic drugs. Myself, in, in my career, you know, I, I've, I've arrested juveniles dealing heroin on jogging paths. So these juveniles are being used by the cartels to deal drugs and they're being brought into this country. And, and the, the fact that we stopped the DNA program, this, in, this administration stopped it, it's unfathomable to me. Do you agree that child sex trafficking as a result of this crisis at our southern border has increased? Yes, sir, I do. Without equivocation? No, yep, I agree. Please, Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Marcos, can I just start with you? You testified a moment ago to Senator Butler that every child gets a Know Your Rights presentation. Is that correct? That is correct. Is that before or after you release them to labor traffickers? Senator, every child that comes into our care gets a Know Your Rights presentation as well as... Have you read these New York Times reports, these stories, the, the series of stories the New York Times has done on the children who are in your care, have you read them? Yes, I have. Have you read that children are scrubbing dishes, they are operating heavy machinery, they are delivering, delivering meals, they are harvesting coffee, they are working construction, they are working as housekeepers, they are working overnight shifts at plants where they are not paid, they are not going to school, they are not cared for, they are not giving meals, almost all of it illegally. Are you aware of that? That's a yes or no. Yes. Do the Know Your Rights presentation help them in those situations? Senator ORR. Uh, That's a yes or no, I think. I, do, you, do you really think that you're helping these children by releasing them to labor traffickers and, yes, sex traffickers, 85,000 children whom you have no contact with? And your answer is we gave them a presentation before we turned them over to these people who are exploiting them on a scale not seen in this country for a hundred years, a century, a century. It's a disgrace in the United States of America. Let me ask you this. You did a, an audit, I noticed, where you gave yourself a clean 
bill of health. So just, just tell me this. Do you require sponsors to document their relationship with the child? Senator, we have a thorough vetting process. Do you require sponsors to document their relationship with the child? Yes, we go through. No, you do not. You, you do not. Have you read the Senate's permanent subcommittee on investigations reports on your office? There was one in 2016. There was one in 2018. There was one in 2020. There was one in 2022. Spanning administrations, what they found is you do not require sponsors to document their relationship with the child. You release them anyway. What about background checks? Do you require background checks on all adults in the household? In cases where the child is being released to their parents, we do not require um, background checks. But, Senator, I would Do, do you really require like background that. checks on all adults in the household in any case? Yes, in some cases we do. How, what percentage of cases do you do background checks on the adults in the household? I, I don't have that number yeah. in front of me. Do you do home visits in all cases? You can actually see where these children are, are being released, who you, whose care you're putting them in? We do not do home visits in all cases. Senator, I'd really like the opportunity to talk about what we are doing. To you, I know what you're ours. doing, and it's, it's incredibly and totally inadequate. And we can read about it in the New York Times. Let me, since you say you've read it, let's talk a little bit about that New York Times report, if we could. Here's a quote from the April 17th installment. Again and again, veteran government staffers and outside contractors told HHS, including reports that reached the secretary, that children appeared to be at risk. Did you warn the secretary that children were at risk? Senator, I'm in regular contact with the secretary. And Did you the warn him that children were at risk? Safety and well-being of children is our top priority. Did you warn him that children were at risk? I'm not going to get into the conversations I've had. You're here and you're under oath, and this is an oversight hearing, and we need to know what you're doing because you're manifestly not doing your job. Did you warn Senator, him that children were at risk? Do you believe that children are at risk? Let's start with that. Yes. Okay. Did you warn the secretary? Senator, I'm not going to get into the specifics of my conversation, but I would like the opportunity Why to wouldn't talk you about, warn the secretary that children were at I risk? I would like the opportunity to talk about what we Let's are look at doing. what the secretary said to you. The other one, James. Yeah, that one. At least five HHS staff members said they were pushed out after raising concerns about child safety. Mr. Becerra, the secretary, told the ORR director, that's you, right, that if she could not increase the number of discharges, he would find someone who could. And then he went on to say that if Henry Ford had run his plants like this, he would never have become famous and rich. This is not the way you do an assembly line. Get the kids out, run them through, get them out to those sponsors, those traffickers. Why didn't you resign when he said this? Do you think that this is morally acceptable? Senator, I joined ORR in September of 2022. I believe that was reported prior to my arrival, but I cannot but speak This is from to, an article this year. I can't speak to what the secretary... Do you think that this is acceptable to run, to, to run ORR like an assembly line and to release these children I to traffickers? I assure you we do not run ORR like an assembly line. The safety and well-being of children is our top concern. And by Plainly statute, not. Plainly it is not your top concern because you have managed to lose 85,000 of them. And the Times knows where they are, or two-thirds of them, and they're with labor traffickers. It's unbelievable. Let me just ask you this. How many kids right now, the 430,000 approximately unaccompanied children have crossed the border under this administration? It's an astounding number. How many are you in regular contact with right now? Senator, we have a number of different providers across the country. Who but what's the, what's the number? What's the number? How many of you are you in? You said child welfare is your top concern. What's the number? I don't have the specific number. How can you not know? Because Why would you come to this hearing and not know? Um, respectfully, if you would like us to provide comprehensive case management to children after they're released from our care, so we can report Respectfully, I would like you to do your job and not release children to human traffickers. Respectfully, that's what I would like. I'd like you not facilitate the largest child trafficking ring in American history. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to say... As a, as a progressive, proud member of this body for the last 12 years, 
I'm done. I'm done with us protecting people who would buy and abuse our children. I'm done. I don't want to send more black and brown men to prison. I don't want more people in prison, but I don't want people buying girls. I don't want people buying little girls anymore. And I'm tired of saying it's okay and that we have to protect the men who do it. I have a president of the United States who has created a fiction about a crisis at the border and he has held up the United States government and its workers around his vanity project called the wall. And it's a distraction from the real issues. And it's a distraction from the real issues. What's the first word that pops into your head when you hear the name Kamala Harris? Liar. Chief. Obama out. <laughs> Nick Walt, ABC News.